All right, so let's take a look at rational and irrational square roots. And I guess before we get to the rational and irrational part, we should figure out what an actual square root is first. So here we've got our first 25 uh, perfect squares. Okay, and uh, yeah, these are something that you should uh, get familiar with and memorize um, because we're going to be using them to simplify our rational and irrational square roots later on. Okay, so um, I think everybody has a good idea what's going on here. Like if I square this number or go 1 times 1, it's going to give me 1 and 2 times 2 or 2 squared gives me 4. Okay, but what a square root does is it kind of undoes what the square does. Okay, so for example, for this 4 here, if I take the square root of 4, that's going to take me back to the 2 that I started with. Okay, so it's undoing what the square does. So here's your first uh, 25 perfect squares. So for example, if I go to 169 and I try and take the square root of 169, it's going to take me back to 13. Okay, uh, let's do another one in here. I think 324 looks like it. Here, let's do one over here. 529, if I take the square root of 529, well, 23 squared get, give me 529. So when I go and undo that with my square root sign, it's going to land me back at 23. So that's all fine and dandy when, it, when you've got a perfect square that you're dealing with. That's called a rational square root. Okay, so here's some examples of those. These ones work out nice and nice and neat. So the square root of 25, well, 5 squared gives me 25. So the square root of 25 must be 5. Okay, 169, well, 13 squared gives me one or 169. So the square root of 169 must be 13. And here they're starting to um, add in some multiplication. What this really means here, this minus sign, is that I've got a minus 1 times the square root of 441. So square root of 441, well 21 squared gave me 441, so the square root of that must be 21, so this is going to be minus 1 times 21, which is equal to negative 21. Okay? negative 21. So you have to remember, just like um, a square, you know, we do our exponents first before we multiply. So for example here, if I had 2 times the square root of 25, or sorry, if I had 2 times 5 squared, I would do the square first because of our order of operations, right? Our PEMDAS, okay? So my exponent I'm going to do before the multiplication. So I would go 5 squared is 25 times 2 is equal to 50. Okay? Well, the same thing happens with our square root. You can kind of, on our order of operations, our square root is kind of lumped in there with the exponent. Okay? So I'm going to do my square root and my exponents before I do my multiplication. So that means that I have to do the square root of 441 first and then multiply by whatever number is out in front, in this case, negative 1. Okay, so let's try this one. So uh, the square root of uh, 144 gives me 12. So 2 times 12, I'll take the square root first, gives me 24. Couple other fancy ones here. What else we got? Okay, so I could rewrite this negative one times. And now here, when you have a square root over a fraction, you can kind of think of it like you don't have to write it every time like this. But I can rewrite this one square root as two, like this. Okay, so I've got negative one times the square root of 1 over the square root of 64. So I have to do those square roots first. So this is going to give me negative 1 times square root of 1 is 1. And 8 times 8 is 64. So the square root of 64 is 8. So negative 1 times 1 eighth gives me negative 1 over 8. Okay. And same here. Okay. Square root of 169. If you want to think about it like this, 
You definitely don't have to write it down like this every time, but this is the idea. 225. Okay, I've got 13 on top. Square root of 169 is 13. And square root of 225 is 15. Okay, so the end of that one. And now here, let's try, try something a little different here. Okay, so this one says I've got three times, and let's rewrite it like this. Square root of 361 divided by 576, the square root of that. So three times the square root of 361, what was that one? I think we were at 19, okay, and the square root of uh, 576 uh, that one was uh, 24. So now I've got this 3 out here. So 3 times 19 over 24. But look what we can do here. Okay. I see 24 is really the same as 3 times 8, right? So this is really one big fraction here. Let's neaten this up here a little bit. So I've got 3 times 19. When I multiply fractions, I just multiply tops times bottoms, right? And they all turn out to be the same thing. So I'm not going to actually complete the multiplication here because I see that this 3 is on the top and on the bottom. So we've got 1 times 3 times 8 here. Okay, So these 3's are really just 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I'm left here with 19 over 8. Okay, So let's try number 8 here now. Negative 4 times the square root of 484 gives me 22. So negative 4 times 22 gives me negative 88. Okay, whoops, negative 88. All right, so there's just a few little uh, drills that we'll get some practice on. Okay, one thing that we can never do, notice how these negatives here on this page, they were all out on the outside of the root sign. And that's okay, I'm just multiplying a constant by another number, negative one times whatever is under the root sign. Okay, but well, one thing that we can't do yet is figure out how to do something like this. Negative 64 does not equal negative eight. This is a big time no-no. Okay, so um, when we're under a root sign, when we see that um, negative under the root sign, for now, Okay, later on, we're going to deal with imaginary numbers and things like that. But for now, we can't do this. We can't take the square root of negative 64. Okay? We don't have the tools in the toolbox yet for that. Okay? So, not everything is perfect. Okay? Uh, so let's take a look at uh, some of these. So square root of 92, well, it's in between the square root of 81 and the square root of 100, right? So this is 9 squared is 81. And this is uh, square root of 100 is 10. So I know that 90, square root of 92 is going to be an irrational number. that's in between 9 and 10. So what does that mean? What does that mean, an irrational number? Well, if you go on your calculator and you uh, figure out what the square root of 92 is, you're going to see this big long decimal, 9.5916630466, and you can, you're going to write numbers until your calculator screen um, gets filled up. Okay? And really, on our number line, these irrational numbers, they actually have these non-terminating, non-repeating decimals that keep going on forever. And that's what you call an irrational number. Okay? So that's why they're not perfect. They don't, they don't uh, give you a nice, clean answer. All right? So when we see the square root of 92, that's actually writing the value in an exact form. This, when I write this decimal out, it doesn't matter how far I go here, I'm always writing a, a non-exact or an estimated answer out. But when I express that number as square root of 92, that's the exact answer of, of uh, or the exact value of, uh, yeah, square root of 92. Okay, so go ahead and uh, um, just compare the other roots here. You guys can, can do this. 
compare the roots to the perfect squares that are there, the perfect roots, or the rational roots, and um, then go on your calculator and see what the actual value is, and you'll see that it's in between there someplace. Okay? So, bottom line, when you find the square root of a number that's not a perfect square, that means you have an irrational square root. Okay? And uh, sometimes we can simplify those. Okay? So let's uh, take a look and see what we've got here. Okay? So square root of 63, right? I know that that's going to be in between. Well, I know that uh, 7 squared is 49, right? And I know that 8 squared is 64. So the square root of 63 has got to be in between those someplace. Okay? So rather than, um, rather than write... So let's just, I'm just going to put this in my calculator here. Square root of 63 is, uh, let's see, 7.93725 and on and on. Okay? So I want to write that exact value down. Okay? This number that I wrote down, as accurate as it is, it goes down to the, you know, one, two, three, four, five decimal places there. That's pretty accurate. But when I go and write it in its root form, it's actually its exact answer, or its exact value. Okay, So the way that I can simplify this is I'm going to go and try and find a perfect square that's in that number and pull it out of the root sign. Okay, So 63 is the same as, I'm going to rewrite that as, 9 times 7, right? Okay, 9 times 7 is equal to 63. Okay. And the reason I want to write it like that is because, looky here, 9 is a perfect square. So I can take that, I can rewrite this like this, square root of 9 times square root of 7, and I can finish it off by saying square root of 9, we know is 3, roots of 7. This is kind of a weird way to write this answer, but this is a true value of the square root of 63. It's the simplified version of, of, that, of that number. So let's see what we did there again. I went and found a perfect square that was inside of that, that was part of that 63, and I took it kind of like I took it out of the root sign. I take that square root value and leave it on the outside and write it as three times whatever was left on the inside, the part that wasn't a square root. Okay? So let's try another one here. Square root of 98. Well, 98 is kind of a big number, um, but I do see, and I, I don't. I can't really see a perfect square in there that great. I'm not that smart. Okay? But what I do know is that this divides by 2. Okay? So let's divide that by 2 and write it as 2 times, well, 98 divided by 2 gives me 49. And looky here, this works out really nice because the square root of 49 is a perfect square. It's 7, or, or is, a, is a rational square root. So I can use the 7 there, right? So I'm going to rewrite this as square root of 2 times square root of 49, which gives me, and when you get the perfect square part, when you go to write this out, you always write the piece that's that comes out, uh, the perfect square part of it, out in front. So this is going to give me 7 times the square root of 2. Okay, So you can choose to write this multiplied sign in here, but most times when you see it after today, it's going to be just 7 roots of 2. Okay, So there's a few more for you to check on here. Okay, so uh, we've got time for one more. Let's take a look at this one. Let's go 2 times 48. Well, 2 times the square root of 48. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this as 3 times 16. Okay, that's 48. All right, so when I go to take my perfect square out, I've got 2 times square root of 3 times square root of 16. Well, square root of 16 I know is 4. So what I'm left with here is 2 times 4 times square root of 3. And it looks like I'm going to get 8 square roots of 3 out of that. Okay? These are just big multiplied signs in, in for each of these. Okay? So for the, it looks like there's three more there. Why don't you guys give those three a try? Okay? And try and find what perfect square lies under that root sign, is in that number. So you can pull it to the outside, take the square root of it, and write it in its as its exact value. Okay, give that a go, and we should be uh, set for next time. Cheers.